Thank you very much, my brother. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, Ronnie. Good morning to you and to all of your listeners. Sorry, I'm, I'm running a little bit late. I was that is trying all right. to do a media release this morning and get it out. And the whole issue with Shaq, one of the things we discussed with Dr. Tuai, which yes. was the Shaq Ramos Yes, yes. So I just issued that press release. Well, you know, you just ago. issued the release out yeah. there and you heard. Um, I, 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 I am very thankful to Dr. Tuai because he sat down and said, Let's, let, if we want to talk about it. Let's just talk about the issues. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what side you come down on. You look at an issue and you say, this issue has to be addressed and will be addressed. We want to talk about um, uh, Gettys Granger to, sure. to, to uh, Dave Dabble, but before I get there, let's deal with what you just said. You have a release co- that just came out on the CD. Let's bring it up to, up to speed on that, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank, yes, thanks. Um, yes, so I, I said all this release. I was planning to do it about a week ago, but essentially um, referring to a media report two Sundays ago, mm-hmm. which media report quoted a report coming from the Chagrams Development Agency Authority Board to Cabinet Mm -hmm. saying that they had received um, a a legal opinion from eminent senior counsel, Mr. Elton Prescott, who himself was in fact an independent senator. So Mm -hmm. one can't attribute any political leanings to him. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mm -hmm. in his legal opinion, according to the press report, the CDA said that the leases that were issued in 2014 and 2015 were illegal and therefore null and void because those leases were contrary to the land use um, set out and delineated in the 1974 um, development plan which had been approved by parliament. Mm -hmm. Now we were aware of that. You recall last year there were actually three demonstrations um, in terms of of focusing on Chagramas. Mm -hmm. One was organized by a number of persons down there um, and that was from the convention center to the parliament building. That was a, on a Friday. That was a yes. long walk um, in which I took part and a, a number of my colleagues took part. Then there was a second one actually organized by the MSG itself, which was a smaller one from the convention center to, to Hague Street, um, the community center there, and then in Carinage. And then there was a third one where we started at West Mall. This was organized by an umbrella group called Save Our Chagramas Committee. Right, we started at West mm-hmm. Mall and went down to the convention center. That one is the one that included Dr. Rowley Correct. and uh, Jack Warner and a whole Yes, of and, mm-hmm. and a number of other folks. Yes, Nicole indeed. Dyer Griffiths was also in mm-hmm. that and so on. Mm-hmm. And that was on the 9th of May. Um, and the, the issue was clearly identified that in our view, um, those leases, well, we were aware of the, of the 1974 development plan and that the requirement was for the CDA to only issue leases in accordance with the, um, the approved uh, designated activity for various parts of Chagramas and so on. And we knew that this master plan that, that Dr. Tuari and his board had, had developed had not been approved by parliament. And in fact, subsequent to that demonstration, the Save Our Chagramas Committee actually was was looking at the legal options mm. with respect to challenging some of those leases and so on. But time was moving and then the elections happened and so on. So we did not actually pursue pursue that legal action. But we were looking at it. So we were aware that there were legal um, implications mm. to leases being issued. Um, that were contrary to an approved plan and that the master plan that had been developed by the UNC was not in fact um, approved by parliament. One Um, of the things that uh, I know you would appreciate um, that I I, I don't ever do, and I'm not saying that you're implying that we do it now, when a guest has left, I don't like to go into, you know, disputing a fact that he said um, with him unless it is fundamentally a a contradiction. What the doctor uh, did say, Dr. Tiwari, he said is that he was not aware that you had to go to Parliament to get um, additional, um, to approval. get a, a approval uh, for, for, for any expansion, remodeling, yeah. he, he said, because, you know, the times had changed. Yeah. And, and well, I, I can't, I mean, if, if he said that he was not aware, he was not aware. Um, okay. I, can't, I can't say that he's not saying what, what is the truth. Um, I would simply say that, that he ought to have been aware. All right, that, I would leave it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there is a valid point, and in our release at the end, I did say that the 1974 plan has to be updated mm-hmm. quite clearly. You can't have a development plan that is um, in, developed in 1974 and approved in, or developed before that, approved in 74, and that remains static 
for all times, ever and ever. Amen. To what I think, uh, do Doctor, um, to what I think, Doctor Tiwari mentioned, uh, 2013, it was revisited. Yeah, they did. They did engage in a planning process, mm -hmm. um, but but there were a lot of there was a lot of contention with that planning process. I mm -hmm. know that, for example, there was a, a so-called consultation or stakeholder meeting in Crown Plaza. And some people could not get in, and there was contention, and so on. That was towards the end of the process. Okay. So I know there was contention in that regard. Um, so we, the government now has to do two things. We're calling them to do two things. One, Dr. Rowley made a very clear statement when um, he spoke at the end of that rally that um, if in government, the, his government would rescind any decisions that were not in conformity with the law, and so on. Okay? Now, that was a more cautious statement by him. Our position was that all leases should just be <laughs> rescinded. All right? mm -hmm. But he was more cautious. Mm -hmm. but, but now that there's a legal opinion suggesting that the leases are in fact null and void, they need to take action on that in a very clear and unambiguous manner. So that, that's one position that, that we have. Mm -hmm. um, the second position that we have is that the um, development, there ought to be a new development plan. And one could draw on elements of it from what had been done in 2013, 2014. I'm not saying you have to start from scratch, but, but there's an important point, and that is that in 2015, the EMA issued requests for proposals. I didn't put that in the release because my release was getting long, mm -hmm. and I was running out of time to get mm -hmm. to your station. Like this morning, yes. mm -hmm. uh, but the, the mm -hmm. EMA did issue a public request for proposals um, or stated together with the Ministry of Planning that it was going to, and the IME, I think, that it was going to begin to do baseline studies with respect to the um, e ecological status of Chagaramas mm -hmm. to then ensure that any future development would not impact negatively on the ecology and on the environment. Now, that therefore suggests that whatever plan had been developed came before the, the studies. Mm -hmm. now, that is wrong. You have mm -hmm. to first do your studies Study and, then, mm -hmm. and know precisely what are, what are the, um, the plant and wildlife existing, what needs to be preserved and reta retained, what is the watershed management that is necessary, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What is a wetland area? Kogwa mm -hmm. Road, for example, is a wetland area and so on. What has to be protected? How are you dealing with your sewage disposal? Because I tell you, there's a huge sewage problem mm. down in Chagrama. We talk about mm -hmm. Rio and the sea not being so good to swim mm -hmm. in and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, most of our coastline beaches are, are yes. similar, similarly I affected. was warned. Yes, yes. so mm -hmm. you were warned. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, um, so we need to do the thing properly. Um, which it doesn't have to take 10 years, but we need to do it properly. And then have a development plan that is consistent with national ideals. One of the ideals is which is, a, I think, a principle that we would like to see any policy and plan going forward um, embrace. And that is a notion of, of, um, of, of, common, of the commons, mm -hmm. that there is property which ought to be common to all of us. That's right. That there is a built and unbuilt heritage that we have, a patrimony, if you wish. Um, and that, that patrimony ought not to be um, given away for private gain. So a simple example of that is you cannot tell me there are beaches that I pay to go to. Precisely. <laughs> you cannot tell me there are recreation areas that I have to pay to get into. That, it's all part of right. the inheritance. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, and one of the things about the development of Chagramas that was being done by those leases was in fact to have mm -hmm. identified large areas of what is now public land to be then given to a private developer who would essentially make profit out of that. It is 15 minutes after 11 o'clock. The voice you're hearing is that of the leader, the political leader of the Movement for Social Justice, uh, David Abdullah. We are talking about the Chagaramas Development uh, Authority, the declaration coming from the new chairman of the board down there, that um, according to advice he received from senior counsel Elton Prescott, is that uh, a lot of these deals uh, between 2015 and 16 were um, illegal, and as such, the contracts uh, be declared null and void. One of the areas Areas raised, however, by Council Prescott is the issue of compensation to the leases for work already undertaken in certain circumstances. How major, is, yes, yes. <laughs> major <laughs> issue. Mm -hmm. And I think the minister got herself caught in that contradiction when she went down to visit the site mm -hmm. and then publicly said something which itself exposes the contradiction. She said, People have started work, 
these are Trinidad and Tobago national citizens. They have invested their money, and therefore, I'm now going on to paraphrase what she said, they ought not to be denied the opportunity of mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. But then she went on to say, however, the land on which they're doing this thing was illegally given to them. Now, we have a real conundrum there because, you know... Which comes from the chicken or the egg. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, Renny, um, if somebody is vending on the street corner, that might be illegal. Mm -hmm. The police swoop down on them, sometimes seize their goods, not break down their, their cart or whatever um, they use to sell their goods from and so on. Sometimes they get arrested, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is the difference between a street vendor in that regard and a big business person who got a lease? Both of them are occupying spaces, quote unquote, illegally. Both uh, apartments both, were built on shifting sand. Right. Mm -hmm. And both of them use their resources. Yes. Now, in the case of the large mm -hmm. investor, it might run into tens of millions of dollars or more. In the case of the small person, it might just be tens of hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. but, but relatively speaking, both investments are extremely valuable for the well-being of the respective investors. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, be, we cannot be treating the poor and powerless different from the rich and powerful and so on. Um, and the government therefore will be setting a very dangerous precedent if it says because these investors have spent a lot of money, mm -hmm. we have to allow them to continue to operate even if the lease was illegally given. And then a squatter, for example, goes in on state land and squats illegally, invests their little few pennies to build a, a, a very simple structure, but that is their home. And then that is broken down because mm -hmm. they're operating illegally. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that I think we need to we need to address in terms of equity and fairness in the society. So you are saying that we cannot cherry pick all the nine identified leases, uh, beginning with the water amusement park all the way down to the Chagramas Golf Course driving range project. All of these, toot bag eye, must be thrown out. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. We, mm -hmm. we, other, than that, other than that, how does the government treat fairly with our citizens, which is what mm -hmm. the Constitution says. You know, the preamble to the Constitution says that the material resources must subserve the common good. That we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, affirm our, our, our belief in the principle of social justice. Um, that advancement should be on the basis of merit and integrity. Right. Those, that's what the preamble says. So you cannot now um, throw that out mm -hmm. because some are bigger than others. And, and that is one of the problems of Trinidad and Tobago society, that, that those the masses of people, if you wish, the large majority, feel themselves discriminated against, feel that they're not fairly treated, whether it is by the criminal justice system, whether it is by the way in which the economy is organized, and so on. And we can't build Trinidad and Tobago as a nation if large parts of the country, in terms of the population, don't feel that they are, in fact, an equal owner of this country called Trinidad and Tobago. That aspect of it, the voice you're hearing is that of David Abdullah, my guest inside brunch. That aspect of it is a very interesting one because on the one hand, um, you can go to the courts and deal with that issue of the of the projects that are going to be declared, the leases, declared null and void, but you have two questions in here, uh, David. One is, can the, is it not likely that these um, leases these uh, folks who won the contracts and started work will then in turn turn around and sue the CDA? Which that, is really suing Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> that, I suppose, is, is very possible. Right. And, and, and you know, one doesn't know how the court will then adjudicate upon that. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and you see, this is why we were demonstrating a year ago in the first place. To stop it, to, yes. To mm -hmm. prevent it mm -hmm. getting to that mm -hmm. point um, mm -hmm. where, where the investors would have started work. Um, as in the case, I think, of Bokoran Restaurant, I think workers started there too. That's where... Um, used to have, I think, the kayak center in that mm -hmm. general area down there. I think workers started at that restaurant. Save and accept there may be a question of due diligence if the, if, if, if the, the awardee did his due diligence and in, in the sense of when I look at something that is, that is um, a profit here um, that says the board, uh, the current board, believes that the former directors and senior management failed in their fiduciary responsibility to adequately safeguard the assets of the, and of the authority and should be brought to account 
for their actions. Right. That to me is very, very important. Well, you know, because the question, you're in the criminal yeah. in the criminal league now. Yes. In other words, will who who gets sued? <laughs> Do the, does, does the CDA as institution or do individual directors who took that decision mm. get sued? But the norm is that this, this, the, the, the Chagrin Development Authority would be sued. As, right. But, yes. but one of the things about, about the Companies Act and, and corporate governance mm -hmm. is in fact that individual directors, either individually or collectively, can be um, sued in their capacity for, for making decisions that were um, out of... Their remit. Or, or, or their remit and mm. contrary to their fiduciary responsibility. Instructive indeed. I'm not a lawyer, um, <laughs> and I suppose... It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one would not hope now that this becomes mm. a situation where a few lawyers then <laughs> make tons of money mm -hmm. at the expense of the interests of, of Trinidad and Tobago. But, but it's, a, it's, it's a decision, it's an issue which I think we need a very clear statement from the government. Um, the government having been well apprised of all of the information mm -hmm. and as a party had taken a stand very publicly on this issue um a year a year and a bit ago you know so they cannot now come and say well we were not aware mm -hmm. or we did not have a policy position on this question they had a policy position on it Bef when they're in opposition and they have to follow through on that commitment going into government. You, uh, you individually in, as an advocate um, and then collectively as the leader of the political um, party um, MSJ, uh, you are in concurrence with the recommendations made by the new chairman of, this, yes. of the CD, all of it? Yes, yes. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we, did not, we were not part of making those decisions. It came to our attention like mm -hmm. everybody else in the public media. Mm -hmm. And their decision was based not on guesswork or on any political motivation they went and got legal advice mm -hmm. and on the basis of legal because if the legal advisor said something else and said well listen at least was entered into whether it was entered into on the 6th of september at 11 30 in the night as some things were being done by the last government and so on or whether it was entered into sounds like you're reading somebody's brief but <laughs> 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 well, you know all these things, though. <laughs> and, um, you know, if the legal advice said that there's no choice but to honor the thing, then we would have to live with it, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as unfortunate mm -hmm. as it would. And maybe a political decision now would have to be taken to negotiate with the leaseholders some sort of reversal or compensation, as the case may be. But in this case, the legal advice seems to be very explicit. Mm -hmm. Illegal, to therefore null and void. We uh, to be continued. Indeed, yes. we will be watching this. It is 24 minutes after yes. 11 o'clock. Um, just like my first guest, Dr. Botiwari, I do have a little window with my current guest, uh, David Abdullah. Maybe I should um, ask for compensation because uh, the traffic got him here late. Maybe I should hold him a little later. Right. I, 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 will, I, I will be I'm, I'm at your disposal. Right now. Good. Tell, at the listener's disposal, you, we will try to abuse it. I'm sorry, that should be not to abuse it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us yeah. get into, before I go into mechanics, and the dagger before I go yeah. into a life of hard work that started out um, with the forming of Pegasus and so on. Um, I do I do want to go quickly into three uh, gentlemen who say this morning that they are traumatized. Uh, they are traumatized because they headed Petrochen and we had some um, things go on with um, giving them better compensation at, at best, uh, Mr. Hassan Ali and so on. The report this morning is that the, the three um, executives in question at Petrotrin uh, are traumatized because most of what is being discussed in the public domain was already settled, so they say. The OWTU is calling for a full investigation yeah. of what happened at Petrotrin. As the former Secretary General, you, were, uh, you are very uh, aware of what happened there. The question most folks want to get clear without going into the into the back room of, of everything is is this a case uh, that the money uh, the nepotism took place that uh, that wrong dealings happened or is this just a case of the retroactive money that was due them in any case and and that in that case it was justified that it, it should have been amended so that they would receive the added compensation including added pension or increased yeah. pension yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't mind being traumatized by an increase of that kind. Right? <laughs> $4.2 million a month. Like, exactly. Yes, indeed, yes. And, mm -hmm. you, know, and, you know, so I don't know how that becomes, becomes trauma. Um, but, but certainly it seems to be a clear case of, of wrongdoing. Now, mm -hmm. 
um, there are several factors involved in it. At, at one level, for example, one can say that the, the workers who are covered by collective agreements, mm -hmm. where there is now a legal obligation, regardless of anything else, because a collective agreement is a registered document with the Industrial Court and under the IRA, the Industrial Relations Act, a registered collective agreement has the effect of law, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And is therefore um, both the, the employer and the persons who are responsible for the management of the company, as well as the workers are bound, and the union who represents them are all bound by the provisions of the collective agreement. Mm -hmm. So collective agreement comes to an end. There's a provision in collective agreement for that to be renegotiated and for a new collective agreement to take place. The same managers were saying to the union and mm -hmm. therefore to the workers that the company cannot pay you any increase that the offer on the table was zero, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So um, first of all, therefore, they were operating on the basis of the lack of fairness. In other words, if the company had money, had no money, let me put it, say, let's assume but not admit that the company had no money, mm -hmm. then you could not pay yourself an increase and tell the workers they couldn't get, right? That just has to be playing wrong and, and unfair. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that in the case of e executive management pay, um, there is a policy, which is a government policy, and that policy has been there for a number of governments. It wasn't peculiar to the UNC or to the PNM before it, that those salary, um, salaries on terms and conditions of employment ought to be signed off on by the line minister and or the cabinet and or the CPO, depending on the, the nature of the enterprise, it may be one or the others of, of those three. So even if the board, it's a privately incorporated company, but there's a shareholder, sole shareholder, which is corporation sole under the, under the law, is the minister of finance. And the shareholder um, would have the responsibility in these state enterprises for giving approval to um, salaries and terms and conditions of employment of executive management. Now, it is, it is therefore not a situation where the executive management were legally entitled to X dollars of increase. In other words, their outgoing contract, and as I'm coming back to now the collective agreement, mm -hmm. the outgoing contract does not specify, unless there's some clause there that we're not familiar with, does not specify that your new contract will entitle you to an automatic escalator of 10% or 15% or 20% or 1% or 0% as the case may be. Mm -hmm. Each contract of employment is a standalone contract which then becomes negotiated for the period it covers. So they were not legally entitled to an increase. It therefore had to be an increase that was negotiated and approved by the board, the full board, mm -hmm. and by the line minister and the cabinet subcommittee, as the case may be. All right? So even though the executive management may have discussed it with the board chairman or something like that, the board chairman, chairman ought to have come to the full board and said, ladies and gentlemen, I have discussed this. This is the recommendation. It, this, it, the basis of the recommendation, because you have to justify it, mm -hmm. is a comparative comparator, um, review of other executive management. Um, the board will then have to deliberate and then make a recommendation to the line minister, who then will send back and say it has been approved. From the press report, it is very clear that all of that did not take place. It is also um, in, in the press report, uh, David uh, Abdullah, who's my guest here, that uh, the, it is reported that the former president, uh, Kenneth Allen, said that this was not unusual. And I'm asking, I'm asking it only in the context of these three are being held up right now, but if it is said that it was not unusual, I, I, I'm not too clear whether he said it was not unusual in Petrotrim or it was not unusual in state corporations. Well, I can't say either. I was chairman of Cipriani College, which, of course, is not a state body. Co company is not a, a company that, like Petra Train, mm -hmm. it is established by an act of parliament and so on. Um, all the compensation 
whether it was for the director, who was the most senior person of the co in the college, down to the down to the cleaner, had to be approved by the CPO. But that was in the case of Cipriani. Mm -hmm. I cannot say mm -hmm. what was the norm in the case of Petrotrin, but um, from 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 the press reports, it um, was indicated that the norm is according to the operating guidelines for state enterprises and so on. Mm -hmm. That executive management compensation must be approved by the cabinet committee that is ap appointed to deal with that. Now, um, it <laughs> therefore means that if previous boards did something contrary, that too was wrong. In other words, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if there's mm -hmm. a policy which is clearly elucidated mm -hmm. and set out that this is the process by which you must follow, then it should be followed. It should be followed. You can't now break it because somebody has broke it. Two wrongs don't make a right. So the point is that that um, there was no a proper approval for for these salaries. All right. Now there's a third factor that I want to introduce, which is that. Um, Everyone is talking in the country about productivity and so on, right? They, they, they're saying that workers should be paid uh, in accordance with some kind of productivity measurements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, managements are also supposed to be held to performance. And particularly mm -hmm. in large corporations abroad, there is a lot of, um, a lot of evidence to suggest that senior executives really are held to performance. If the company is losing money, if you have major projects that are behind time and over budget, then not only don't you get an increase, you get fired, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In Trinidad mm -hmm. Tobago, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. we did in Petrotrin was to reward non-performance. Because this is, uh, what was it? This was paid in 2015 when the company was uh, doing badly. And uh, we are yes. talking about uh, a bonus of over $900,000 uh, was, was granted yes, uh, and, to Mr. Hessen at least. And, and you, in a situation where all the major projects of the refinery upgrade, whether it be the, um, the upgrade and refurbishment of the, of the FCCU, which is a fluid catalytic cracking unit, which is the main, main unit refining unit mm -hmm. in Point of Pair, and which is responsible for generating higher end products like gasoline and, and kerosene and so on, which generate the significant profits because it, the refinery margins are good. That FCCU was down for, for, for more than a year. I don't remember the exact details. For more than a year mm -hmm. because it was the, the um, refurbishment of that unit was, was badly done. Um, the, all the other plants in the gas optimization project, the, the GOP project, whether it was the original World GTL project or whether it was the um, ultra-low sulfur diesel, the US ULSD, ultra-low sulfur diesel plant, which is still not up and running, mm -hmm. which, which was started, I can't remember, was it six or seven years ago? That is not up and running. That's a vital element to get good quality diesel because quite honestly, the diesel coming out of point of pair is not good quality diesel and so on. And so many other plants were taking two, three years, four years, five years longer than originally um, estimated to be completed and were over budget, not by $10 yet already, um, but by hundreds of millions of US dollars. Mm, mm -hmm. And increasing Petrotrain's debt which debt is now a huge burden and drag on the company going forward? What is the what can one expect, uh, David Abdullah? What can one expect? All, all points taken, but what can one expect uh, from a company that did this retroactively? For instance, if it is found to be wrong, you go after the individuals and get the money back. You get the money. Has this money, in fact, been paid out, or is the company just committed to this money? Okay, in the case of the salaries, yes, because if salaries were increased, mm, so those were paid. That was paid, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And people got that money in their pocket and did whatever they, whatever they. So in a case like that, you try to the, one can yeah. ask to if get it, it was, back. If from it them. was wrongfully given, yes, then, if it was wrongfully. Yeah, in other given. words, if for example your employer mm -hmm. makes an error or wrongfully overpays you, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got you got an extra five thousand dollars in your salary. They could actually get you to repay it mm -hmm. if it was wrongfully paid. Mm -hmm. So, and that happens many times with employers. Some payroll thing goes wrong, or somebody authorized something that they had no power to authorize. Yes, the, the employer can can seek to recover it. Mm -hmm. So that that ought to be recovered. Now, in the case of the pension, um, 
There, there are two things there. One is that obviously the pensions were then calculated on the basis of the new salary, um, and right, and so on. That mm-hmm. that, that um, new pension did not come out of the employer's revenues um, and wasn't part of the employer's right. expenditure. Right. It came out of the pension plan. All right, and I suppose some money had to be put by the employer to into the pension plan to cover the in, increased pension costs. Trinidad and Tobago Police Service does not seem to have the capacity or the will, perhaps, I don't know which or both, to address white collar crime. Mm. There were all the allegations, um, prison gate, the issue of the former Attorney General and Mr. David West and his, um, you know, conversations about, um, you know, inducements to be appointed or not appointed as director of the police complaints authority mm-hmm. with respect to dropping um, or drawing statements that he would have made in a case with Dr. Rowley and Mr. Ramlo. Mm-hmm. So all of those matters have not been um, brought to any conclusion because they haven't even gotten to the point of saying, well, yes, there is uh, there are grounds for prosecution or no, there are no grounds. Your no. angst and low expectation is not dissimilar to those I hear from Mr. Afro Raymond, who hold the same yes. jaded uh, look at the DPP's office. Yes, and I, 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 I mean, the DPP, quite in fairness to the DPP, the DPP is not the one that has responsibility to investigate. No, it, it, is, is, the, the it is the police who, who right. do that and then um, send the case to him. Right, after the DPP done, would advise. Mm. Um, no, the DPP's office is also woefully understaffed and, and not properly resourced and so on. But what what the outcome of all of that is that we in, um, intensify or mm-hmm. reinforce rather the culture of impunity in the country where people who are high office holders can be seen to have done wrong. I'm not saying that they have because mm-hmm. nobody, has, to innocent nobody proven, has done. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Nobody mm-hmm. knows where, what allegations have been made. Um, and so can be seen to have done wrong and not be held to account for any wrongdoing that they may have done, or if they did no wrongdoing, that their names be cleared. Be cleared. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're listening inside Brunch 107.7 in the morning. David Abdullah is with me. We are here, and in one of the primary areas of our discussion is going to be McCandle Dagger, so yes. we don't want that time to get away from us. However, it uh, you, you know, as you open the door, I see something happening inside of there, and like a good or maybe a bad lawyer, I'm going to step in and say you open the door. It, it, b- because on the one hand, all that you're saying, they, all that many uh, uh, Trinidadians have been saying, are saying, is that there are a lot of things to take care of to correct. I mean, no one thing happens in a vacuum, so we've got a whole infrastructural change to do. And at the same time, while that is happening, or while that should be undertaken, there is the clamoring from uh, workers through their unions, OWTU being no exception, that we need to get a couple of things settled now. Now, 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 in my ignorance, and I confess, in my ignorance, I'm a little lost as to, on the one hand, the progressives like yourself and like union leaders, a lot of them are, a lot of them, not all, uh, the progressives understand that you have to do some juggling, but there seem to be an impatience after one year, there seemed to be a great impatience. We need to get this done now. And I say that only because when I hear the demands and the merits and demerits are, 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 are not really the issue here. Let us just say they're justified. When I hear the demands being made, but I see so many things to be done at the same yeah. time, I'm asking guys, can we do this juggling without the confrontation, uh, confrontational nature? Yeah. Well, the unions, um, you know, only have within the last few weeks, you know, been saying these things have to be settled now in a public way. Um, because there, were, there was time being given to try to resolve these matters through negotiation and discussion and so on. Now, the, the, you see, the, the issue is not that people want 2015 or 20, sorry, 2016 money or increases in, for 2016. Mm-hmm. This is for periods that are long gone. Mm-hmm. So this is for periods 2011 to 2014 or 2012, 2015, in some cases 2010, 2013, and so on, um, which are long, long expired, and were for periods when there was still a significant um, economic activity taking place, oil prices were $100 a barrel, and so on, and so on, and so on. And other unions were settled in a political way, many feel, 
by the last government for those periods with 14% as the case may be. But in the case of only two and a number of other of the, of the unions, um, those the negotiations for those unions were not settled by the last government because um, the, those unions were railing and protesting against the last government for bad governance. And so the last government seemed to have taken a position. We're not settling with, with one set. We will settle with those who are more <laughs> friendly to us. Um, and that is another case of discrimination mm-hmm. and the lack of fairness. Mm-hmm. So the unions are saying, listen, government change now. We at least have to resolve 2011, 2014. We are not now making any demands for the current period because the current period we are aware is a problematic period. But let us resolve how we're dealing with the past period. Now, what the government and companies will say is, well, we are now in a situation where we don't have the money that we had 2012, 2013, 2014. But that's not the workers' fault. The workers, in fact, produced um, that enabled the money to be generated for that past period, but now being denied some level of reward for that performance in that period. So um, this is, the, this is the, the situation. And in some cases, like in the case of, of Tech, I am aware that the union did come to an understanding. I, I, I don't want to use, use a strong word as, as agreement because nothing was, was signed off in that way, like a signed collective agreement. But there was a good understanding between the union and the management and the board at how that the negotiations for that 2011-2014 period could have been mm. settled. Um, but that has not been approved by by cabinet or the line minister, minister of finance, as the case may be. So that that tends to aggravate the, the um, unhappiness amongst workers. And then in the Petrotrain case, um, workers were relatively quiet. And then you hear this story with mm-hmm. Hassan Ali and Alam and, mm-hmm. and Ramnath getting all this mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so on. And workers saying, but hey, you guys paid yourself all this money, huge increases, while you're telling us zero, zero, zero. Um, you know, so... I understand well, the anger. I was merely yes, saying I, that I and, if, and they, if that there is no money here right now, you can make representation because it's, it's deserved. Yeah. However, we, and, we have and, to find some way to let the climate be less... Um, belligerent, right? Yes. And, and this is where this is where a wise leadership at the level of government will say, "Okay, how can we find a way to implement something that is fair?" Mm. Now, there are two elements of that. One is an actual increase in pay, which you then get in your pay packet now, which is not, which is really 2014 money, but you're getting that in 2016. Mm-hmm. So if your salary, just for argument's sake, was $1,000, it goes up to $1,100, so you start getting $1,100. And then, of course, there's back pay. So you have $100 multiplied by X number of months, so there's back pay. Um, and then you have to address how do you find the resources to pay the back pay. Well, there was a word that I liked until uh, some people start acting as though it's a dirty word. It's called bonds, but <laughs> that seems and, to be a and bad Yeah, word. I mean, there are options like that. There are options <laughs> of, of land. I know like the, I think some of the unions um, did in the security services, I mm-hmm. do think, were mm-hmm. talking about a land or a house and so on. Yes, so the there presence. are mm-hmm. options that in the spirit of, of discussions about the reality and, and so on, Options could be put on the table. We've got to get out of the box and get creative. That's right. And, right. and, and they may find support or favor, they may not. I can't say which ones will or will not. I'm not part of the process anymore. Mm-hmm. But, but that is what a wise leadership mm. needs to do. But you can't do it ex cathedral. The government can't say, we are going to pay back pay by bonds mm-hmm. and, or in five tranches and, and finish at that. No. That is something that you have to discuss and negotiate. And at the end of that process, when everybody feels comfortable with the consensus and compromise, that each side will have to make, then you make the announcement. Yes, ignoring one party will not work at the same time. Uh, traumatizing, as we were this morning, <laughs> uh, the public with the possibility of strikes is another thing that also has to be tempered. It has to be happening from both sides. I'm not um, putting a, a case either. It's 15 minutes away from the top of the hour. We've already um, um, gone into the abuse period of Mr. Abdullah's time, but he he, he acquiesced to it, so I will continue. Uh, my, my, my thing is when a man is down, kick him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's well, 
I thought, I thought, I, was, I thought it was just a matter <laughs> since I came late. I, I now have to give what I, what you lost on the front end. I no, you owe, you owe me an answer of extract a pound. David Abdullah, let's go into an area here. 1962, the nation became independent. Yeah. At that point, everybody was celebrating, but um, not all um, eyes were turned only on independence. The eyes of uh, Geddes Granger at the time uh, was turned into what was going on in Trinidad and Tobago. He went, he formed Pegasus, and uh, that is the first body to give national awards honoring national heroes. The first two he honored, for instance, were Arthur McShine and um, Captain Arthur Cipriani. So he was from early, he had his eyes on the prize, this uh, man born in 1935. Uh, in 1966, became the president of the Guild of Undergraduates at the University of the West Indies, and he moved them into a, an area that hitherto they had not been, one of advocacy uh, for the injustices in the country. You uh, know a lot about uh, Geddes Granger. I want to deal with the impact because I don't feel, and it disturbs me greatly as I'm sure it does many people, when you look around and you see a nation that are not clear as to a major turning point in the nation's direction. The young people are not very clear on it. A lot of people are in denial. Some folks, for instance, felt at the time that if you talk about NJAC, you're talking about going back to Africa. No such thing. The, 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 the thrust was to bring equality in the country. You and I know at the time you couldn't see black folks in banks in doctor's office. You couldn't see them in the front office. They were always in the back office. So let's talk about Geddes Granger turned McCandle Dagger. Your your impression of the impact he had on Trinidad and Tobago in the first part and the Caribbean uh, in, 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 yeah. in general. I certainly think that McConnell Dagger um, has to be recorded in our history as one of the very important historical figures for all those reasons that you have just so well described. Um, and I, I've said in my the first tweet I sent out just after his death, when I learned of his death, pre-1970 and post-1970, in other words, you're, you're very correct that um, he, it, he evolved in that um, period of, of the, the latter part of the 60s. Um, that was perhaps the key formative part of his organizational activity and, and civic contribution mm -hmm. um, through Pegasus mm -hmm. with other people, Roy Mitchell and many others. I mean, I, I, I don't know all the names and, and certainly the history of Pegasus has to be written by somebody like Roy Mitchell. Um, but there were many people who, young people at the time, who would have been imbued with the promise of independence. Yes. Um, and the fact that we were now going to be in charge of our own affairs and determine our own destiny and so on and that the injustices of the colonial system, um, both the social structure of discrimination and so on, of racism, of, of, um, of inequality and so on, that, that, this, that social structure will be broken down mm -hmm. and that there'll be equal opportunity for all and so on. And that in terms of the economic system, um, that the economic system will be operated in a way that labor would would find its its rightful place in terms of dignity of the human person, of the human being, um, and so on, and fairly rewarded, and that persons could get social mobility through education, etc. That was a promise. Mm -hmm. and, and very clearly, the bright-eyed young people of the early 60s um, who were teenagers into their early 20s at, at the point of independence, like Eddie's Granger was, um, would have seen that promise not being fulfilled mm -hmm. and therefore become increasingly agitated by, by the fact that the government seemed to be moving very much in step with what was the same old colonial pattern. I'm very moved by that chronology you're putting out there because a lot of folks felt, for instance, it was the advent of George William University that spurred him to action. No, it was way before that. Yes, I think, I mean, he was civic, he was involved in civic action, was civic mm. um, activity rather, before, through Pegasus, because Pegasus predated Sir mm -hmm, George Williams. Mm -hmm. um, Sir George Williams was, mm -hmm. what, 68, 69, 69. Mm -hmm. um, but Sir George Williams was a catalyzing um, event, as was, as was the 1969 bus strike, mm -hmm. um, because in 1965, the Williams PNM government passed the Industrial Stabilization Act, which banned all strikes. Yeah, yeah, they, right, yes. yeah mm -hmm. all, all strikes became illegal by mm -hmm. the ISA. Mm -hmm. and, um, but workers continued to strike, um, and the bus strike was an important one. Now, it's very interesting that 
in when the IOC was passed, it was passed through both houses of parliament, I think, in one day. And the governor general, I read the story, I, I believe it to be true, <laughs> so Solomon Ho Choi, um, assented to the bill, well, the, the bill became, becoming an act while he was watching cricket in the Oval. Um, how true that story is, I, 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 but I've heard it anecdotally told to me. So Someone described it as through. vulgar haste. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the persons who spoke in the Senate was Ray Lange, a, a senator who represented essentially business interests. Mm -hmm. And he said this was, I'm paraphrasing him now, saying this is a red letter day. Because on that August eve, when the Union Jack was lowered and the red, white, and black went up, a number of us felt a great deal of trepidation because we were not sure we could handle our own affairs without recourse to the what he was then implying of the troops mm -hmm. of England and so on. And he said, we now know that we can handle our own affairs. In other words, he felt confident that the PNM government would have taken action to ensure that worker unrest or whatever in terms of strikes and protests and so on would be um, would be outlawed and stamped out. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could see the social classes lining up in '65, um, and therefore the 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 social changes that the generation the, 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 that that emerged in 1962 expected did not uh, would not happen, and so the catalyzing. Um, events of the bus strike of 69, mm -hmm. which brought together um, many groups, trade unions, Pegasus, the, the Guild of, of Undergraduates, people like Lloyd Best, James Millett, Bas Diopande, a whole set of political mm -hmm. activists and so on, all came together in solidarity with the bus strike of 69. Um, now, some of them then agreed to block the buses a morning. Some didn't. I'm not going to go into who did and who didn't, mm -hmm. but some didn't block the buses. Others did and were arrested and beaten by the police and so on on South Key outside PTSC as they tried to block the buses um, from, from coming out on, on that particular morning. Um, and it is around that and the student struggle, solidarity with the students in Canada, that the National Joint Action Committee was formed, not as a unitary organization, but as a committee of mm -hmm. many different organizations, hence National Joint Action Committee. Yes. Um, now, the person who really popularized Black Power first was George Weeks. And he had, on the side of the car that he drove as president general, the union always provides a car for the president general, it was a Chevrolet Malibu at the time, uh, a big placard with a fist with Black Power on it. And yes. He used to drive that car from probably around 68, 69, mm -hmm. shortly after um, Stokely, Carmichael, Director Kwame Turi came up with the slogan Black Power. Mm -hmm. um, so... And the Vanguard newspaper, which was a newspaper of the Office Workers' Trade Union, still is, but it used to come out weekly in those days, sold on the streets, was in fact a newspaper that had articles about the Black Panthers, about the struggle for black power, writings of Rodney, of James, of Fano, and mm -hmm. so on, um, Huey P. Newton, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of that was in the pages of the Vanguard. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, when... In George Weeks in 1970, as his New Year message, January 1970s, called the 70s the Roaring 70s, which, which Valentino then used as a calypso and so on. So he called it the Roaring 70s. So this was something he said even before um, February 26, which was when um, members of NJAC went into the cathedral. One of them was... was um, Granger, later Makanda Dag, another Dave Dabo, um, now Kafra Kambon, another Russell and Dalcio, who died a year ago. His ashes were brought back to Trinidad a couple of weeks ago by his children. Mm. And, and I went to the memorial in Arima and they were scattered in Matlot and so on. Russell and Dalcio. There were many people involved in that protest. Um, David, Dave Murray, David Murray, who is, who is Igor Omi now, and, and others and so on, were part of that, um, going into the cathedral, Clive Nunez and so on. Um, and they, that action of going into the cathedral, they were arrested because they had previously gone into Canadian banks, Royal Bank of Canada, Bank of London and Montreal, Bank of Nova Scotia, Bank of um, Imperial, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. All of those were the banks downtown. So they went into those banks protesting against Canadian um, policy and Canadian imperialism. And, and the marginalization of, of, of black of, nationals. Of, yes. in, uh, in solidarity with students in Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They weren't arrested for going into the banks. They were arrested for going into the Roman Catholic Cathedral. And when they were charged and brought before the magistrate and so on, the late Lennox Pear, who was 
their lawyers, very progressive person and so on. Lennox said to them, listen, you go up before Chief Magistrate Winsy Bruno, who's a very senior person in the Roman Catholic Church. So you better know Sorry. that that your situation now you went to the man cathedral. Um, so the best thing for you to do really is to call out people in solidarity with you. And they did call people out in solidarity with them. And the, that case I don't think was ever tried because that was the start of the, of the huge demonstrations. Sorry. And that continued until the 20, 21st of April when the state of emergency was declared. But, but that, that movement of NJAC, um, with the slogan that emerged as well, not only black power and power to the people and so on, um, the University of Woodford Square became um, the People's University. Um, and the, there was another slogan, African and Indians Unite. That's right. And so it was trying to bring in, and the Office Workers' Trade Union made a very important statement of this general council just before April 21st, calling on the workers to come out from May 1st, and so on. And then, of course, you had the unrest in the army. But that entire movement did bring about significant social change um, and some economic change, because the 1968 um, five-year development plan so the, that was developed before 1970 mm -hmm. and drafted by people like William DeMas, Frank Rampersad, Frank Massotti, Patricia Robinson, um, who in her own right, she was not just a wife of A.N.R. Robinson, she in her own right was a very capable economist and, mm -hmm. and so on. And others, um, I suppose, um, Eugenio Moore and, um, and J. O'Neill Lewis and, and, and Mr. Alain from Tobago and so on, all of them top public servants would have helped to develop this five-year development plan, spoke about control and ownership of the commanding heights of the economy. Mm -hmm. But the Williams government never moved towards that mm. until after 1970. So 1970 became the impetus for National Commercial mm -hmm. Bank, um, which was previously Bank of London, Montreal, the mm -hmm. Workers' Bank, Trintoc, and, and the start of, of, of NP, and stuff like that. So 1970 was important to push the government towards ownership and control of the commanding heights. And also, in terms of what you made before, the point you made before, in terms of removing the segregation on the basis of race, in terms of people of color, whether they're African or Indian, mm -hmm, working mm -hmm. in any position in the country. It addressed the whole uh, Malcolm X notion who taught you to hate yourself because there was beauty in blackness at uh, this time. Not only one felt privately, but one was openly doing it. So there was a yeah. whole change. There was a, 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 a feeling of belonging. Right. And that, I know you used that, to play those came. songs yes. on the radio, <laughs> Say It Loud and Black and I'm that's Proud. Right, that's right. Um, you know, mm -hmm. Nina Simone, yep. Young Gifted, young, and, gifted, gifted and, black. and Black, and, yep. and so many other yep. powerful songs like Ch that. Choice of Colors and right, the Message that, that's from Black Men the, right, yes. the one that you were singing earlier. Yes. And, and then in the Calypso, um, there was a what was it? There was another one, Black Man's Prayer. Black Man's Prayer, yes, yes, uh, yes my brother that. Lynch, that's right. Right, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and so much of, of consciousness, of, mm. of which was really an affirmation of identity, a sense of, of, of yes, I am equal to. That's right. The, 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 the Mexico Olympics with, with Tommy Smith and Carlos, um, John Carlos, raising their fists mm -hmm. with a black mm -hmm. love on it. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And they were banned. Oh, yes. They never, oh, yes. never ran for the, oh, yes. for the United States. Never so Tommy again. Smith would have been one of mm -hmm. the greatest sprinters mm -hmm. of all time mm -hmm. and so on. Amazing. But, but all of that was very important in terms of saying that decades of centuries of discrimination of being seen as lesser human beings that that was no longer the case. All of this is a, is a consequence of an awareness that first um, uh, showed itself uh, nationally in 62 um, with Pegasus and talking about McCandle Dagger yeah. get his Granger. And time. of course, he could not have done that without a whole, not Can't only rape people, yes. I mean, not you know. only individuals with him, mm -hmm. outstanding, other outstanding leaders, but also the moment. The nation. The moment that was important. And, yes, yes, the moment, mm -hmm. and also masses of people who came together at that moment. It was it was the perfect storm. It was. It was, it was a, a people coming to age. It was an independent nation that could not, for all the uh, the reasons of having paper uh, independence, but all else dependence. Uh, it, it, it was at I a time that people just uh, could see that we had to do something about it. And, they, and as you said, you know, sometimes you just need a little spark. And the, 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 civil, um, the, the civil protest was going on in the United States, a black power demonstration, the Brother Carmichael and Hugh 
Bowie and everybody was doing their thing, but when it came to the Trinidad context, he just needed something to ignite it. Yeah. And, and, and I think the, um, the Canadian situation. Yeah. And I know we're out of yeah. time too because yes, we, could we, are, talked, we, talked, yes. we, talked, we could have talked about the, the mm. rod, what was called the Rodney Riots in Jamaica in 68. Mm -hmm. In Antigua, there were protests. So the whole Caribbean was. The whole, and that is what, but that's what right. we said. It was not that's just right. a Trinidad and Tobago situation, but it extended right. out. Um, yeah. I, I, I think uh, the nation um, handed uh, to Brother Dagger a wonderful send off. Uh, yes. I, I just wish that more time would be spent um, not looking at this back to Africa um, narrative of some, somebody decided to import or right. just looking at the, 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 the turmoil itself uh, 21st April but looking at what happened after that, the impact after that. And I think uh, when you're aware of what Pandey tried, what Shah was involved in, what uh, Dagger was involved in bringing the nations together, it, it becomes more vulgar when you see politicians uh, exploiting that and destroying what started out as a good move to bring the nation together as a nation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's a key point. And, um, you know, one of, one of the things I suppose, and, and historians will write that, will write both about that very positive period of Daga and, and then Jack and so on. And then also about, uh, and critiquing the, the mistakes and errors that they've made subsequently, because nobody is perfect. <laughs> um, and no, none of us are gods, and we've That's all right. made mistakes, all of us in, right. in, the, in the public life, and those of us who try to bring about change have made mistakes and so on. But I'm, I'm not talking about 2010 or anything like that. I'm talking about the fact that the retreat by Enjak significantly into the realm of culture and the arts yes. was important in one respect, but I think it also enabled others to bottle Enjak into or pigeonhole it into that notion of simply the ethnic identity things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When right. all of the, the intention was to the, give expression, it was yeah. to give expression, but people, of course, found it convenient to do exactly that. Right, yes. as the mm -hmm. same from the, the, the more far reaching political trans and economic transformative impacts, which, which was 1970 clearly mm -hmm. was about. But that is a kind of dis discourse that we have to have in a very rational and balanced and objective yes. way going forward. Um, and, and which is why, um, as the, 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 you know, the, the people in the liberation movements in Angola, Mozambique, and Southern Africa used to say, a luta continua, the struggle continues. Always. Because mm -hmm. the process has of, of trying to end discrimination mm -hmm. and inequality and inequity um, that process of struggle has to continue, which is why we in Demonstra talk about the Second Republic, because we think that the existing institutional arrangements, um, both in terms of the state structures and the social relations of power and the economic relations of power, are still very much akin to 1970 and before. And, and that has to change. If Just we well, a little more, more a, a little better camouflage now. Yes. Yes, it's systemic, and, and uh, it's just as glaring or even more so, but you have to look yes. between um, the organizational structure to see it, as it were. Um, it's, right. uh, it, it yeah. was important that we deal with the CD. It was important that we deal with Petro Trin, as it was that we deal with Brother Bacandal Dagger. Um, it just makes the point that you and I need a whole lot more time <laughs> when we want to do this again. Uh, or, David. or fewer topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that I, would Sorry, be. I started you off on the wrong foot. <laughs> I, I got into the CD thing, which was... No, no, but, and, and it was important action, yeah. but 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 we all are, are aware that we need a better teaching um, to our younger folks as to what 70 was about because that was a nation coming of age not a, a black nation not an Indian nation but a nation coming of age and all that followed it including the mutiny um, was a matter of a lot of issues burning coming together in what we call a perfect storm yeah. there was a song I intended to play we're out of time but I intended to play it um, that really described the period, the mighty sparrow had a calypso called sedition. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. not, not far away from our chalk, he's afraid, Carl. Right, <laughs> yes. Yes, had some, some great ones. Good, you had another great one in that period, Good Citizen. Yes, Good Citizen indeed. <laughs> um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning. As always, what do you anticipate will happen in conclusion? What do you anticipate will happen uh, coming out of this petrol trend situation? Well, we hope that you know the government takes action to um, properly investigate um, and you know have an audit into not just that decision about awarding the you know senior management awarding themselves increases, which is essentially what happened, but also into other decisions that were made, contracts that may have been awarded, and so on, because a lot was going wrong. 
Um, and we can't go forward unless we identify the fact that fundamental errors and or wrongdoing took place in the past. David Abdullah, uh, political leader of the Movement for Social Justice, thank you so much in saluting you and thanking you for spending the time this morning. I will get the good citizen by the, the mighty sparrow and I will play it right now. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks Have a wonderful day and thank you for coming. Thanks, thanks.